Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Giving the Game Away. And today we're going to talk about monetizing the metaverse. Hey, Ian. Hello, how are you, Sam? I'm doing well, doing well. What about you? I'm good, I'm very good. The metaverse is an exciting uh, subject. Um, mm. I'm happy to talk about it. We've been talking about it for a while, um, but we've never really like div dived into it in one conversation. Uh, and we won't talk about Somni in space specifically, but I guess it's worth talking about the metaverse in general, first of all. Yep. Um, the metaverse is this big grand theory, basically, that the internet is going to become a collection of, it's, become, it's going to become a shared 3D virtual space uh, where everything is done, sort of like um, sort of like Second Life when that was a thing, except global and huge and big. Uh, practically, the metaverse currently is used to describe things like Fortnite in some ways. Mm-hmm. And even something probably the closest ones to to have built a version of it for sure. Exactly, yeah. Um, and right now, it's sort of this. It's describing um, a sort of social space, a digital three D social space where everything happens. Uh, Fortnite has it, it's a game, but it's also uh, Tim Sweeney's described it as a platform as well um, because it's you know music concerts are happening there. Uh, there's social gatherings happening there. I've heard of business meetings being done in Fortnite, which is yep. something to consider, Sam. Um, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 really interesting, and it's in many ways the future of uh, of some games and the future of the internet in general. And Somnium and Space is a really interesting uh, part of that future. Um, I, you're quite close to Somnium and Space, aren't you, Sam? Do you want to describe it? Absolutely. A word to me. Yeah, I mean, I've met Arthur, who's the, the founder, um, just before he started the whole project. And um, what they're trying to do is literally build that metaverse. But the next step, which is in mainly in virtual reality um, mm. and also in a decentralized way, so that if you are a, a user, you can actually buy land as part of their, um, their, their offering. And you actually own that land. That land is on a smart contract on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And then every um, commerce that you're making, whether you are building something on that land or uh, building uh, plants or virtual goods that you can then sell to other uh, players, you also own those items. So it's all about decentralizing and creating this digital economy that is mm -hmm. really in the hands of the player. So it's a big, big undertaking. Um, one of the main things that, that makes them different from other platforms is that um, everything is, is really happening into one big world, which really makes it feel like a, me um, a metaverse. Uh, I don't know if you've been you know, in VR chat or yeah. high fidelity or, or some of these other virtual worlds. You kind of have to jump between rooms and yeah. each room is on a server. And it's, of course, a lot easier and a lot more stable to do it this way. Uh, Somnium Space is taking that away and everything is kind of this infinite map that you can visit um, that is always there around you. You don't have to jump between, uh, between, between servers, which really gives it that feel that the, the world is you know, unlimited. Um, so that's basically where, where we are. And we at Admix are working very, very closely with them. So Arthur is actually an investor in Admix. Uh, which I had to disclose, and um, and I actually also was part of their first um, um, crowdfunding campaign. So mm -hmm. I do have some shares of the company and also quite a bit amount of land, this virtual land that you can buy and that is actually appreciating in uh, in, in price um, and one of my best investment of the year. So mm -hmm. nice. yeah, we, we're quite close and we, we aim to be the business model. One of the business models that will be introduced into that metaverse will be uh, product placement and and non-intrusive adverts through admix that's really interesting i i wasn't actually um i think i've i've read it around here and there but i've never really absorbed the fact that it is decentralized and that is a big difference between uh, that's it. Like, like Fortnite. Yeah. um do you think that's sort of a, a necessary thing for i i, I wanted to work this later but there's a lot of mini metaverses right now, and I would expect that one big one is going to rise eventually. The one that everyone uses, like Facebook did as a social platform. Mm -hmm. um, do you think decentralization is going to be an important feature for that uh, primary metaverse to happen? Uh, it's an interesting one. So I do believe in decentralization. I think that you know giving power to the users mm. is really useful for a simple reason, which is creating incentives 
for users to actually be involved in that virtual world, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're, um, you know, think about Second Life, which was not decentralized. You had people that were actually making money there by, mm -hmm. you know, creating, um, I don't know, virtual um, furniture, and then you could sell it to other people. People would buy it, and they would actually integrate those couches and, and maybe jackets and so on on their avatars. But they actually didn't own the item. They owned it mm -hmm. inside Second Life, but actually it's Second Life that owns it. You cannot take that couch and mm -hmm. put it in another place, right, outside of Second Life. So you're really mm -hmm. limited by, by the publisher. The publisher really owns the content. You're just kind of mm -hmm. paying for it, but almost renting it. So Somnium Space takes it one step further, which is these items are actually independent of Somnium Space. Somnium Space is almost like an empty shell uh, they provide the infrastructure, but then you place your items on uh, your property there. And if it's compatible with other platforms, you can take it out and it's mm. yours. You own it. Even if Somnium Space doesn't okay. exist or goes down, you still have the item. You can do something else. So, of course, what you're going to see over time is um, this is going to increase the prices because you actually own the item outside of this platform. So it's going to increase okay. uh, commerce also between platforms because you can buy something. You don't have to worry about, you know, is this platform good? Is it going to be around for, for a long time? It doesn't really matter. It's like traveling across different countries um, without really having to care about that. So I think it's going to incentivize the economy for sure. But the big challenge with that is usability. And that's something that Fortnite obviously is, is, is nailing. Absolutely. It's really easy. You get an account. You get started. There's no, you know, you don't need to um, log in with multiple accounts or um buy cryptocurrency to buy these items on the blockchain so of course all of that can be abstracted and that's something that somium space is working on currently mm -hmm. it was more for i would say more tech savvy early adopters who really have to be putting in the time and the resources to know understand and understand how it works and i had to do this myself you know there's a learning curve to yeah. to be a part of it but it's very early days so they have time to sort all of this stuff out yeah i mean it's exciting that I haven't actually delved into the actual um, Somnium space they've created, but their web presence is really sleek. Like their website is really nice and in inviting, actually. Um, I suppose. Do you think it's going to get uh, more user friendly? Is that a, like yeah. a near? Yeah, definitely. It's. Uh, I know it's part of their plans. Um, mm. You know, currently it is. They've been trying to build a core audience of mm. early adopters, and they have an amazing community, which mm. is pretty okay. small, but incredibly engaged it's like people are actually living there it's it's wow. incredible um and you already have some people that are having real jobs there so uh, lately they introduced the somnium space builder so you can actually a bit like a think of it like unity you can build like 3d models of, of things but mm -hmm. even simpler so it's drag and drop and then you can publish that house or whatever you've built into your parcel that you previously bought and so mm -hmm. some people now are architects in somnium space they are getting paid by other people who do not have mm -hmm. time to build their own houses so there's already that element of economies and jobs being created inside somnium space which is really really exciting and wow. it, when they start making it really simple really slick um, mm -hmm. and also available outside of purely vr which mm -hmm. is something that i've been um, telling arthur for a long time like vr is amazing it's definitely where it's going but not everyone has a headset yeah. and there's still a lot of barriers to entry there. So if you make a simple version for PC, for mobile, like a companion app, um, mm -hmm. that's really when it's going to start to take off. And they've already been working on that. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's looking really, really good. And the team there is extremely impressive. Nice, nice. I mean, speaking about the architect thing, one of my earliest memories, one of the things that triggered my interest in psychology, actually, and sociology especially, was uh, watching an interview with... A, was someone whose full-time job was just making furniture in Second Life yeah. many, many years ago. He was interviewed by the BBC, uh, and I found that fascinating. Um, I, the metaverse is, is really interesting to me for a few reasons, partly because, uh, and we, I've written an article on this, which I haven't published yet, but partly because of the idea of third space. In, in sociology, a third space is an area outside of your home and work where you socialize, where you hang out, where you speak with friends and mm. enjoy regular activities like cinemas or pubs or parks even. Um, and as of this year, especially third spaces are becoming really digital. People are moving to video games to socialize and hang out. Um, and Fortnite is a great example of that because they've just exploded 
and become this amazing third space. I think that uh, metaverse, all metaverses currently, all of these pocket metaverses, so some new space included, are going to follow that. People are going to move there to socialize instead of play games, which is really interesting to me. It's like Second Life was sort of ahead of its time and died a little early. Uh, but now it seems like the world is ready for that sort of um, social change, I guess, is how I'd describe it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Yeah. It is. It is. Um... So to clarify, there's, uh, there's actually a misconception that uh, Second Life's dead. So I actually yeah, okay. work with Philip Rosedale, the, the founder, because he founded High Fidelity after that. Um, and yeah. it's, it hasn't grown since 2000. They're still okay. stuck on the same million user, but those users mm -hmm. are generating about 50 million a year uh, wow. in digital goods. So the economy has, has been sustainable. It hasn't grown necessarily, but you still have the same people, or maybe now they're kids, or I don't know, but there's the, the same audience, right, of people who are still passionate about it. So the retention and the average revenue per user on this platform is incredible. Okay. Um, but what you said was quite interesting about the third space. So I guess there's multiple things here. It's I, I always see the metaverse as a 3D version of the internet, right? Yeah. It's exactly what you said. It's whatever you want to do, whether it's, um, I don't know, watch a video, watch a live concert, mm -hmm. meet with your friends, buy things. Everything that you do on the 2D internet, you will be able to do it in a richer environment, which will mm -hmm. open all kinds of opportunities for brands and businesses to mm -hmm. promote their product in a much more exciting way than just a, a 2D ad banner, uh, mm -hmm. because now you'll be able to have the product there inside the environment. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's, I think, really, really exciting and opens a lot of incredible opportunities. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, I think the just to just as another feature set, one of my favorite things about the um, metaverse as a third space is the potential for like social good that you can do, um, especially in a lot of charitable organizations. Um, there are a lot of charities that just provide company for elderly people or people recovering from illnesses, and being able to socialize in a digital space is a huge opportunity for those charities, especially. Um, I, I think it's, yeah, I think that's that's one of the biggest reasons that this sort of technology should survive and get bigger, because it's not just um, it's not just an opportunity to do it for doing its sake. It, it can actually enrich people's lives uh, in huge ways beyond just making money, uh, making people feel like they're connected to other people. It's really important. Um, and obviously the importance for brands is also immense as well. Um, a separate point, but, uh, completely yeah. relevant still like brands ultimately want to connect with people and connecting with people, um, is what every single person wants to do too. That's why advertising in third spaces is huge. Advertising in cinemas, advertising in pubs, social media, yeah. social media. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So let's, let's talk about monetization a bit, because uh, obviously Fortnite and Somnium Space, while we talk about them as like almost like 3D versions of the internet, monetization models of the internet just can't really work in the same way. You can't have um, pop-up video because it really takes you out of the point of it. Yeah. Um, which obviously is why we're so invested in this concept, I imagine. Why well, uh, we exist in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I guess, I guess there's a conversation about how, um, well, we can look at how Fortnite's doing it. So Fortnite is obviously big on brand partnerships um, and putting a lot of money into concerts and stuff like that and building these digital experiences on their own. Uh, Somnium Space being a decentralized version of that. Do you think, um, do you think they're going to have the same sort of uh, brand output, brand monetization potential? Um, I imagine concerts would be difficult, for example, but branded outfits and stuff like that would be probably quite in the near future. Yeah, so um, I know that they're working on various revenue streams. Um, mm -hmm. They are actually doing concerts. So the, the whole really? decentralized aspect is not really something that changes that, right? The yeah. audience is still there, and that's what mm -hmm. brands or you know concert will, will care about mm -hmm. is how many people can we reach. The sure. decentralized element is really who owns the goods, who owns the items. Um, 
And okay. in that sense, Somnium Space acts more as a, as a marketplace, just putting people in touch through the environment. While Fortnite, you know, they are controlling the prices, they're selling everything. So they, they own the whole space. So in um, some ways, um, something like Somnium Space, which is decentralized, is more appealing to brands because they're not working through a third party. There's, not, there's no barrier to uh, the audience. Um, well, there's still, I mean, they will still need to work with Somnium's kind of graphics to, you know, to, to, to display, yeah. right? So it's, it's really more, more about the underlying economy that is decentralized more than the display of, um, of a concert. So when you're inside Somnium space, you can't actually tell that it's decentralized. It's not something that you can see, but mm. it's, uh, it's something that will incentivize people to um, buy stuff of each other and create things because they get to actually own it, not just in that platform. Mm. Um, but just on that, so I think what the main difference between the two platforms, like Fortnite and Semium Space, besides the, the scale uh, difference, of course, is uh, I think something that Fortnite has done really, really well is that mm. they've disguised this metaverse, which is Tim Sweeney's dream, into a game. Um, yeah. And the reason why it's smart is because you need an incentive to get people to actually get into that space, right? Mm. The, thir the third space is not something that people will default to if they don't have any reasons to go there. Mm. So um, a lot of these platforms like Second Life or Somnium Space, initially where you maybe you haven't reached critical mass yet, there's sure. not you know, that much to do um, because there's no game, it's just hanging around. So mm. of course, um, Somnium is in integrating a lot of mini games and now you can build your mini game, publish it there. So that's, that's amazing. But Fortnite did it the other way around when they started with the game and then kind of build that ecosystem around it. And there's this mm. famous tweet from Tim Sweeney. Um, I'm not sure who he was responding to, but basically saying, yeah, Fortnite's a game, but ask us again in one year. Mm. And that was like 2018. And last year he retweeted it and everyone, after the concert of Travis Scott and so on, and everyone was like, ah, that's what you mean. See. So, you know, it's, it's bolting on some activities around the game, which mm. eventually would be much bigger than the game. Um, mm. But I think creating an incentive, it's key because people are not going to come to your platform. Mm. Just, you know, they need a reason to do so. Yeah, I think uh, Somnium Space's incentive is, to me at least, and I'm uh, very much an outsider to the whole thing, to be honest, is this idea of owning virtual land. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, which is huge. Like like the early days of the internet, owning, owning valuable uh, website URLs is actually big business. There are people who have made yeah. a lot of money just because they owned a, a URL that a company wanted. Um, I like the idea that uh, eventually we'll reach a point where you start, where you would have like succession, like you'd have to pass down your virtual land and your will and stuff like that. Um, and that seems like sci-fi in some ways, but it's also very much on the horizon, it feels, um, because this land has value. Like you said, if you have a virtual, it's like a, exactly as you said, right? If you have a, a website with a, a prominent domain like mm. business.com or sport.com, you create a website, you get millions of people on it. As long as you have the audience, the eyeballs, you can always monetize it. And yeah. so buying land in some new space is exactly that. And you have prime locations, which is next to the center of the city. You have locations that are a bit further away, which are your you know, longer domain names um, mm. with hyphens in the middle. So it's uh, it's the same concept. You have you have a whole diversity of domains that have different prices, and because it's decentralized, because people can buy it off each other, the the economy and the prices reflect that that diversity. So it's uh, it's really exciting actually to think of it as a three D version of the internet because you, you end up seeing so many parallels, so many things that oh this thing here, this is you know um, like I'm seeing the builder right. You can build your your experience. That's like WordPress, but in 3D, mm. building your website yeah. without code. So you start seeing all these things that are just repeating itself just with one extra dimension. And uh, of course, we'll create huge opportunities in the future. Really? Yeah. Um, so AdMix's presence in Somnium Space is something we haven't really spoken about. Um, Somnium Space is very much uh, collections of privately owned land, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. Um, how does AdMix integrate into that? Are there public spaces where uh, in game in play ads are shown or can you put in play ads within your own land I yeah think. so it's both so okay. there is definitely a center town which is kind of owned by somnium 
mm. in which place they will, you know, uh, advertise for various things there. But the main idea was not actually for them to make money. It was for the landowner who are creating, building their own houses, their own museum. Um, and then when they attract traffic to this virtual estate, they should have a way to monetize those eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And so the most of the money, most of the revenue will be passed on to the actual landowner. So it's not for us to enrich Somnium, it's to enrich their community who are, mm -hmm. again, creating that extra incentive for them to, to build exciting concepts, right. exciting mini games and attracting people so that they know that for every user that actually enjoy that, you know, they can make money with advertising. So it's not gonna be the main business model. There'll be all kinds of things purchases of items, um, potentially subscription to, you know, visit a museum or so on. Um, I don't know all the details there, but um, definitely advertising will be will be a big, a big part of it. Mm. Monetization was definitely a big part. So we haven't actually mentioned Somnium World, uh, Worlds, which they announced recently. Um, yeah. But the trailer for that, they monetization was a heavy part of it. They're really encouraging people to make mini games in their own little pocket universes, essentially. Um, and make money from doing that. It feels like they're really trying to uh, not just line their pockets because I, I don't know if they actually are through uh, in a significant way through this, but to actually encourage their users to be a part of this economy, this virtual economy, which is very different. Like Fortnite, you you buy a skin and that money is gone. You don't then right. generate the revenue. Uh, it's it's a completely different vibe it's more of a marketplace than uh, massively yeah. yeah 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 the key is to incentivize the economy so mm. you you get people to start to spend and do commerce with each other and reselling the land um and we've seen you know incredible growth in the price of the land every time you know more users come in they want to buy the land the land's already been bought so they outbid each other um yeah. this is really the the basics of supply and demand and, and we can see that massively happening in the platform so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really, really exciting. The economics of that must be crazy. Does uh, the Somnium space use actual currency or is it a uh, virtual currency like Fortnite? No, it's real. So, I mean, they have their own Somnium Cube, which is their own kind of cryptocurrency. Um, mm -hmm. But for the big purchases like land, um, you basically use Ethereum. That you they use an uh, NFT marketplace uh, called OpenSea. So you go on OpenSea, you can see all the parcels, you can bid for them. Um, so it, that's what I mean. It, it does require a little bit of a learning curve because yeah. you know it's um, it's on the blockchain, so you need a wallet, you need to load your account. So, but that's just the first step, right? This is their mm -hmm. first year, effectively. Um, I think they made—I don't want to misquote them—but probably over close to a million dollar in revenue from selling land um, mm -hmm. over the year. And the land is increasing in price. So, mm -hmm. some stuff that I bought, um, you know. A year ago, when they did the first offering, it's probably like four or five x now. Wow! Um, and um, and some of this, you know, some of this land are going for like, yeah, ten, fifteen grand. So it's uh, it's not as insignificant. It's uh, it's a good investment. I've called it last year. I've called it uh, at the beginning of the year that um, virtual land could be the most lucrative uh, investment opportunity for millennials. Yeah, you Pretty did. Sure I shared that video, right? So yeah, yeah, you did. You did. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if this is uh, you know crisis proof i think everything digital at the moment is going in the right direction so um so yeah i think a lot of people are skeptical you know why would you buy this land it's not real but yeah. again it's like buying a website buying a, a website domain in 1993 must have been pretty crazy sounded pretty crazy for for most people right so yeah um, we'll see how that goes the internet is becoming a third space, as I said, and you can see that you can see that like even in mobile games, they're becoming a third space. I talk to my mom in Scrabble more than I do on the phone some days, <laughs> most days, um, which is a bad sign. I, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about to sort of put a T on this, uh, we mentioned it earlier. There are currently a lot of mini metaverses like Fortnite and Somnium Space. There's a multiple mm -hmm. metaverses, um, but these cater to two very different audiences. Fortnite is obviously a game first, and it's becoming this big social third space. Somnium Space is doing it the other way around. Um, I guess, realistically, do you think there will ever be one big dominant metaverse, or are there going to be lots of pocket metaverses that appeal to different niches? Yeah, I mean, this is something that Arthur from Somnium Space and I mm -hmm. and uh, Philip Rosdale from High Fidelity are, used to talk about quite a lot at the beginning. 
um, is about interoperability of the metaverse. So everyone is building this little pocket, as you said. Yeah. Uh, but if you really want to build the metaverse, your goal should not be to actually own it. It should be to connect with others, right? So mm -hmm. just like every website is connected via the web, which is this common protocol, so that when you click on a link, you can go to another page. That's what is needed for the 3D version of the of the of the internet right now. Um, there's no such thing as hyperlinks in 3D, although with Somnium Space, we actually built a portal between their platform and high fidelity, where you could just go into a portal and that would open the other app and you were still traveling in VR between apps, which was really, really cool. Um, but you know, before the web existed, when it was just what is called the internet, just two different things, the internet were working on separate machines and they were not really communicating. There was no protocol to see the content or to click to go to the other one. So this is where we are right now on the 3D side. We have yeah. these different pockets. They do not really talk to each other. Uh, there's no common language between them. But yeah. if we build a protocol to link these different entities, just like the web, but in 3D, then effectively Fortnite will be a website, Somnium Space will be a website or a collection of websites, yeah. and they could still talk to each other. And if they have the same protocol, you can bring your virtual jacket or your house, you can uh, put it in the other, other platform. So wow. obviously that might never happen. Um, we'll see, but that's, that's how you know, purists see the metaverse. It's, uh, okay. It shouldn't be owned by anyone, it should be owned by the people. And what's mm -hmm. lacking right now is this inter interoperable standards to make uh, transfer possible between these different metaverses. Okay, so we're moving in that direction though, it sounds like, especially, it's already happening-ish. Um, it just needs a much bigger collaboration between big entities, the people who own these mini metaverses. Um, but it's fascinating. It is like the early days of the internet. And I guess the moral of this entire podcast is, is invest in virtual land. <laughs> because well, I don't want to give any uh, investment advice, but um, true, yeah. definitely yeah. something to, to look into for sure. I mean, you know, this is where this is where the attention is going. I think creating this economy around it is something that currently was didn't doesn't really happen in games because the economy is owned by the game publisher. And yeah. so if you actually create a reason for people to build items, craft items, do commerce between each other. This is really the, the future of digital economies and, and something that is personally, I find really, really exciting. Yeah, I mean, especially like um, 3D artists, I imagine this must be a fantastic opportunity. If you're a 3D artist, genuinely, I watched a guy get interviewed for building chairs in Second Life 10 years ago. <laughs> that could be your next career move. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Somnium Space is full of uh, museums and galleries of people showcasing their art. And, you know, in VR, you can literally see that massive holograms and sculptures. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's an incredible experience, honestly. It's, people, uh, it's life changing. I've seen people buy virtual art pieces and tweet about them. And yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. There's a whole economy going on. Check it out, I guess. The metaverse is a thing. It's getting bigger. Um, it's really fascinating and it has very unique, very fascinating monetization of its own. Fantastic conversation with you, Sam. I'm glad you we as got well. Thank you so much. Yeah. This was great. Great to chat. Yeah. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Please follow us at Mixplay and I will see you next week for another episode.